it is obvious that mistakes were made. It's self-evident that mistakes were made. We must identify what the facts are, learn from the facts, assess and make changes, enhance training to ensure that this never happens again. Okay, that's about as good as it got. But I'll tell you who else ought to get fired. And that's the public servants who took time away from their last latest six week vacation to crank out the false outrage machine. The Secret Service, you know what this story is? This is just another log on the fire. The American people have lost faith in damn near everything, haven't we? Oh, come on. You can't say that, Ed. Oh, yeah, I can say that. Heck, we don't even think the NFL is serious about stuff anymore. Nobody trusts their internet service or their cable provider, and we're all mad at our cell phone company, right? In fact, most Americans have completely lost faith in democracy. It's dangerous that a guy can get so deep inside the White House and somebody off-duty decides to put the hammer down. It's also dangerous for Congress to punt on a war. It's also dangerous for Congress to pass over 50 bills that will actually take health care away from millions of Americans who desperately need it and millions who have never had it before because of a pre-existing condition or they couldn't afford it. Five weeks from today could be a very dangerous day, the most dangerous of all. At this moment, it seems the party of unprecedented obstruction is going to gain control of the House and the Senate. Now, this will have disastrous consequences. And let me just remind all of you that when you don't do what you have to do, bad things happen. Obamacare will be number one, the number one target. Let's repeal this failure before it literally kills women, kills children, kills senior citizens. Let's not do that. Let's love people. As people of faith, I'm a born-again believer in Jesus Christ. And I believe that as part of my duty as a believer in Christ and what he has done for me, that we should do for the least of those who are in our midst. That's my personal belief and my personal conviction. What's the parallel here? It's an attitude. They are going to do it. And if they are in a position to do it, you can count on it. When Republicans grab the reins, they will rush to put American boots on the ground no matter what. Maybe we can get enough of these forces trained and get them on the battlefield, uh, but somebody's boots have to be there. And if no one else will step up, you would recommend putting American boots on the ground? We have no choice. These are barbarians. They intend to kill us. And if we don't destroy them first, we're going to pay the price. Sound like he's serious to you? If they had the power, you think they'd do it? Oh, yeah. The military-industrial complex would be revved up, well-oiled, and on a roll. The war on women. It's very real. And the effort to roll back women's rights will not stop if they get power. The Democrats want to insult the women of America by making them believe that they are helpless without Uncle Sugar coming in and providing for them a prescription each month for birth control because they cannot control their libido or their reproductive system without the help of the government, then so be it. Let us take that discussion all across America because women are far more than the Democrats have played them to be. Really? I thought we were about rights, equal rights, equal pay. You know, all the things that are important to every single American. Let's not forget treating wage earners like roadkill is what they're all about. I want people to make as much as they can. I don't think a minimum wage law works. We all support, I certainly do, having more taxpayers, meaning more people that are employed. And I want people to make a lot more than $9. $9 is not enough. The problem is that if you can't do that by mandating it in the minimum wage laws. Minimum wage laws have never worked in terms of helping the middle class attain more prosperity. And do you trust the Republicans to do something on immigration reform? Hispanics can kiss the American dream goodbye if these folks get power. It's true in some cases, but they aren't all valedictorians. They weren't all brought in by their parents. Uh, for everyone who's a valedictorian, there's another hundred out there that um, they weigh 130 pounds and they've got calves the size of cantaloupes because they're hauling 75 pounds of marijuana across the desert. Those people would be legalized with the same act. No stereotype in there. If you're a parent, only one party wants to make it easier for a psycho to run into your kid's school with a weapon in hand. 
hearing the heroic stories of the principal lunging, trying to protect Chris, I wish to God she had had an M4 in her office locked up. So when she heard gunfire, she pulls it out and she didn't have to lunge heroically with nothing in her hands, but she takes him out, takes his head off before he can kill those precious kids. One of the single most dangerous things is the conservative obsession of making it harder to vote in America. Voter ID, which is going to allow Governor Romney to win the state of Pennsylvania, done. And now did they stop after they lost in Pennsylvania? These are dangerous times. Americans need to dig deep and stop this attack on democracy. No Supreme Court has done more to attack voting rights than what this, course, this court has done in the last year and the way they have rolled back protections in traditionally racist southern states. On Monday, they made it harder to vote in the biggest swing state in America, Ohio. Americans need to recognize the moment. Recognize the moment. What is happening? It's not as fast as a takedown on a field. It's not as fast as a guy getting into the White House. There's a little mojo that it takes, but over time, if you're asleep at the wheel, and you don't recognize the moment, you're going to find out someday that elections have consequences. Let's roll it back 14 years. If Gore had really defeated Bush, right? We know Bush stole it, right? Huh? Come on, remember Florida in 2000? Do you really think that Al Gore would have put Roberts and Alito on the court to bend at conservatives so they could do what they did yesterday? Render an opinion without, render a ruling without an opinion on voting rights? Do you think that liberals would have rolled back voting rights off the Supreme Court? Had Bush not won, we wouldn't have had a Supreme Court. So elections do have consequences. So get out and vote and protect your yard because that's what this is all about. And when they say that they are determined to do things, believe them. Get your cell phones out. I want to know what you think. Tonight's question. Is a Republican takeover of Congress dangerous for America? Text A for yes, text B for no. 67622. Leave a comment at our blog at ed.msnbc.com. We'll bring you the results later on in the show. This is no small order, what unfolded in Ohio yesterday through the Supreme Court of the United States. For more, let me bring in State Senator Nita Turner of Ohio, who is running for Ohio Secretary of State and Ring of Fire Radio host America's Attorney Mike Papantonio. Mike, you first. I want to ask you, what's this ruling signal by the Supreme Court? Would a liberal court have done this? This is a court that's become an extension of regressive, punitive Republican policy. They're intent on keeping minorities, students, the elderly, the disabled away from the polls because historically that group has voted against Republicans. That's what this Supreme Court decision is all about. There was no question in my mind or anybody who's followed this court that they were going to rule. We knew that they were going to rule like this because they become comically predictable. The intent and political motivation of this court is made clear in this Ohio voting case. The dysfunctional, predictable majority, they have, they've deprived thousands of Ohio residents from the vote uh, to, to vote early. The courts clearly understood for many workers who want to vote, their only chance to cast a ballot is during this period called the Golden Week in Ohio, yeah. where voters can register and vote on the same day. And you know what else they knew, Ed? They knew that the Secretary of State, John Houston, all last year, all but admitted that voter suppression efforts in Ohio were to keep minorities from voting. He said it. It was clear. It was unequivocal. And the, this Supreme Court, the sad truth is they knew that he said it when they made this ruling. Nina, does this ruling by the Supreme Court sound the alarm greater than ever? Your reaction to no. Tuesday's ruling? Yeah, it does, Ed. It's un-American. It's immoral. And I, and I agree with Mike. You know, this, this lays at the feet of the GOP in the, in the state of Ohio because but for the current Secretary of State asking the United States Supreme Court for an emergency stay 16 hours before early voting was, was supposed to start today, Ed, people were ready to vote today. And that opportunity was taken away from them by the man that is supposed to be protecting the rights of voter voters to vote. People need to understand that what is happening in Ohio, North Carolina, you name it, all across this country, they are coming for the ballot box. And if they are successful, it's of, successful in taking away that great equalizer, what else do we have le left? Everybody should be outraged by this. So, Mike, if Nina Turner doesn't win the Secretary of State's office in Ohio. 
Can we come to the conclusion or make the assumption or speculate that there's going to be more of this kind of stuff, maybe even through the Supreme Court before 2016 in a major state that is going, has traditionally affected the White House run? I don't think we have to speculate. We see it in Wisconsin. We see it in North Carolina. What's happened with this court, Ed, is they've become so predictable. The, look, we, the sign of a dysfunctional court, I don't care what level is, but when a court becomes so dysfunctional that you can predict within 100 percent of what they're going to do, when you have a majority like Scalia and Roberts and Thomas, uh, when, when you have these characters all together and you know ahead of time that they're always going to vote against the consumer, they're always going to vote against the expansion of voter rights, they're always going to vote against the environment, they're always going to vote for the corporation against the little guy, they're always going to vote for personhood of a corporation, when it becomes so predictable, comically predictable, you know that that court has become dysfunctional. As a matter of fact, very quickly, there's a test that, that constitutional lawyers use all over the world, and that is, this is one of the factors they look at, look, look at. Can we look at that court and understand ahead of time that what we have is politicians dressed up in black robes? They're not, these aren't judges anymore, yeah. Ed. So yeah, they're, they're politicians in robes. So, Nina Turner, how big an uphill battle is this going to be? How, how big of a roadblock is this for you? It's, it's big, Ed, but, but people have to still get out the vote. We're going to utilize the hours that we have le left, and we are going to continue to compel people to get out there to vote. At 59,000 voters in 2012 utilized the Golden Week. There was a study put out by the Northeast Ohio Voter Advocates that said that African American voters utilized that early in person voting by 56 percent. They are hurting low income voters, they are ho hurting the, the homeless. But you know what, Ed? They don't care. They will put their party over the people, but the people will have the final say. And so I don't want folks to get discouraged by this. I want them to use their energy and their synergy to come out in the great state of Ohio and vote these folks out of office. Our very democracy depends on it, Ed. And people in Washington and all over this country need to take note because Ohio is the swing state of swing states. This is a national crisis of consciousness, and we need to get take elected officials out of office who don't believe in the fundamental right to vote, Ed, immoral and un-American. State Senator Nita Turner from Ohio, also Mike Papantonio. Great to have both of you with us tonight. I appreciate your time on this story. Remember to answer tonight's question there at the bottom of the screen. Share your thoughts with us on Twitter at Ed Show and at We Got Ed. Like us on Facebook, and thanks for that. An update from the CDC health officials will be addressing the media in about 15 minutes about a possible case of Ebola in the United States in Dallas, Texas. We will bring you that news conference live right here on The Ed Show. But first, states in play, a closer look at the governor's race. The GOP is at risk of losing. Annette Tadeo joins me from Florida. Stay with us. We're right back. Today could be a very dangerous day, the most dangerous of all. At this moment, it seems the party of unprecedented obstruction is going to gain control of the House and the Senate. Now, this will have disastrous consequences. And let me just remind all of you that when you don't do what you have to do, bad things happen. Obamacare will be number one, the number one target. It is obvious that mistakes were made. It's self-evident that mistakes were made. We must identify what the facts are, learn from the facts, assess, and make changes, enhance training, to ensure that this never happens again. Okay, that's about as good as it got. But I'll tell you who else ought to get fired. And that's the public servants who took time away from their last, latest six week vacation to crank out the false outrage machine. The Secret Service, you know what this story is? This is just another log on the fire. The American people have lost faith in damn near everything, haven't we? Oh, come on, you can't say that, Ed. Oh yeah, I can say that. Heck, we don't even think the NFL is serious about stuff anymore. Nobody trusts their internet service or their cable provider, and we're all mad at our cell phone company, right? In fact, most Americans have completely lost faith in democracy. It's dangerous that a guy can get so deep inside the White House and somebody off-duty decides to put the hammer down. It's also dangerous for Congress to punt on a war. It's also dangerous for Congress to pass over 50 bills that will actually take health care away from millions of Americans 
who desperately need it and millions who have never had it before because of a pre-existing condition or they couldn't afford it. Five weeks from today, Let's repeal this failure before it literally kills women, kills children, kills senior citizens. Let's not do that. Let's love people. As people of faith, I'm a born again believer in Jesus Christ. And I believe that as part of my duty as a believer in Christ and what he has done for me, that we should do for the least of those who are 